In this video, I'm going to give you five tips on how to get a better accent in English and specifically how to sound a bit more British. Hi, my name's Dan and welcome to One Click Class where we teach you professional English. So what does a British accent sound like? Well, there are many British accents found in the UK and they vary depending on which part of the UK you're in. So for example, an accent in Liverpool is very different from an accent in London. Accents also differ according to your age, your social class and your gender. In this lesson, I'll be giving you tips from standard Southern British English. So another quick point before we make a start, and that is that there's nothing wrong with having an accent from your own country. In fact, many people, for instance, have achieved incredible success in their professional lives with an accent from their own native language. In some instances, it might even be an advantage. That being said, if your current accent is an impediment to communicating effectively, or if you simply want to sound more British, then you're in the right place. So without further ado, here are five tips to help you improve your accent and sound British quickly. Tip number one, learn the phonetic alphabet. All good dictionaries will have the word you're looking for, its definition and its phonetic spelling. Once you know how to say the phonetic alphabet, pronouncing individual English words should become much easier. For example, here are a few words that sound different in British English to American English, because in British English, we don't pronounce the, pronounce the final R sound in many words. Bigger, father, over. In British, bigger, father, over. Bigger, father, over. And sometimes words can sound very differently in American English to their British equivalent, even when they're spelt the same niche, in American English, niche, root, in American English, route, schedule, in American English, schedule, and semi, in American English, semi, niche, root, schedule, semi. Once you have learnt the sounds, Try typing words into Google or go to a dictionary. You'll see the phonetic spelling of the word and you'll also see an apostrophe which tells you where the stress is on that part of the word, the emphasis. For example, the word accent as a noun is accent. The apostrophe should be just before the A. We'll come to stress shortly. Tip number two, learn schwa. It's impossible to sound British without this sound. It's an absolute fundamental, a must. Schwa is the most common sound and specifically vowel sound in the English language. Notice I said vowel sound because the letter obviously isn't in the dictionary. You may have noticed the schwa sound in the first tip when I compared the British and American pronunciation. It's at the end of words like bigger, father, over. In words with two or more syllables, at least one of those syllables will be unstressed or weak. More often than not, that sound will be a schwa. Look at the following words. Away, banana, woman, sugar, garden, paper, under, Police, doctor, correct, support, figure, color. We don't say our way, garden, police, or correct. We say away, garden, police, or correct. Schwa is formed by relaxing the tongue and the lips and making a sound. Uh. It helps to compare it with some other vowel sounds. Apple, orange, umbrella, impress. 
but with the schwa sound, we have very little movement with the mouth. Uh. Schwa isn't just important to individual words. It plays a crucial role in linking words too. Tip number three, stressed and unstressed words in a sentence. As we mentioned in the last tip, if a word has more than one syllable, one of the vowel sounds will be weak. Therefore, one of the sounds will be stressed. And I showed in tip one how that stress is shown in a dictionary. But how do we add stress to a word? Well, we have three options. We can make the sound longer, we can make the sound louder, or we could make the sound higher, or a combination of these. A simple way to illustrate this is to listen to these words, which can be either a noun or a verb, because the stress on each word will tell you whether it's a noun or a verb. Listen carefully. Conflict. Decrease. Refund. Listen again. Conflict. Decrease. Refund. All of these are nouns. The stress is at the beginning of the word. Now listen to the words as verbs. Conflict, decrease, refund. Here, the stress is in the second part of the word. Now listen to them combined. Conflict, conflict, decrease, decrease, refund, Refund. Now here comes the really cool part that can really help your accent. We use this concept of stress within sentences too, because English is a stress-timed language. In other words, timing depends on the number of words within the sentence. Listen carefully to the following sentences. Don't tell Dan. Go and speak to Mike. In the first sentence, we have just three syllables whereas in the second sentence we have five. However, they both take about the same amount of time to say. Now let's do some more sentences and listen carefully. Cows eat grass. The cows eat the grass. The cows are eating the grass. The cows have been eating the grass. Now I said that a little bit slow and deliberately so you could hear what I was saying, but now I'm going to say it normally as a native speaker. Cows eat grass. The cows eat the grass. The cows are eating the grass. The cows have been eating the grass. Again, despite the obvious length of each sentence being different and having an increasing number of syllables, it will take the native speaker about the same amount of time to say each sentence. Stressed words are normally nouns, main verbs, adjectives, adverbs, negative contractions such as won't, can't and isn't, whereas unstressed words include articles, pronouns, auxiliary verbs, prepositions, and the verb to be. And the vowel sound in each of these unstressed words will be schwa. Tip number four, sentence stress, intonation and pausing. So another good tip to really help your accent is speaking a bit more slowly and using pauses. As you listen to native British speakers, you will usually hear quite a lot of intonation. By pausing, we give the full effect to the stressed words. Often pauses will be shown in writing at least by punctuation, such as a comma or full stop. Listen to these sentences. My name is Nathan, and I've been living in Madrid for about three years. Before coming here, I lived in Germany, where I worked as a waiter. I have two brothers who live in Brussels. Now listen to that same paragraph again, but this time after each pause, I'm literally going to say pause for you to hear. My name is Nathan, pause, and I've been living in Madrid, pause, for about three years, pause. Before coming here, pause, I lived in Germany, pause, where I worked as a waiter, pause. I have two brothers, pause, who live in Brussels. We can also use pauses to create thought groups, Listen to this following maths expression. A plus B times C. A plus B times C. 
Now the following expression, a plus b times c, a plus b times c. Clearly you can see how this is written, but if you're just delivering this information orally, you need a way of getting it right, of, of getting the listener to understand exactly what you mean. And we can use pauses to do that. What about this sentence? Jack, said Abigail, is lazy. Jack, said Abigail, is lazy. Second sentence. Jack, said Abigail, is lazy. Jack, said Abigail, is lazy. Can you hear the difference? Jack, said Abigail, is lazy. Jack, said Abigail, is lazy. We really can make a difference by the way we pause and the way we emphasize and stress words. Not only that, but if you use this method, you're on your way to sounding English. Tip number five, listen, imitate, record. Tip number five is probably going to be the most enjoyable. You need to watch and listen to TV programs, films, podcasts, radios. I'll put some suggestions in the description below for you, but you literally have thousands of choices available to you. I would suggest picking something that interests you and has quite a lot of dialogue, so action films are probably not the best choice. Once you have watched and listened to a few programs, go back and listen with purpose. Once you've listened with purpose, you're then going to imitate. Pause the video or the podcast or whatever it is you're watching and repeat what the person has said. Focus on the sounds and the intonation rather than precise understanding. And it's at this stage, you also need to think about recording yourself. You can use a voice recorder, a phone, or use Audacity on your PC. To finish the activity, go back and watch again and ensure this time that you understand what is being said. Then record yourself again and compare your recording with your first attempt. Using imitation, I can get my students speaking English with a beautiful British accent. However, when I ask them to read back what they've just said, they often revert back to their own native sounding accent. So putting in a bit of effort here, listening with purpose, imitating the British accent and recording yourself can be a really useful way of improving your accent. It needs to be practiced though. So in summary, let's be honest, learning a language is hard and perfecting a language and speaking like a native is incredibly challenging and you'll have to ask yourself whether putting in all that time and effort is worth it. As I mentioned in the introduction, there's no problem in having an accent. So the tips I've given you today, while based on a British accent, are great tips anyway for helping you improve the way you speak English. Learning the phonetic alphabet, and in particular the schwa sound, will get you pronouncing British English words perfectly and help you sound more natural when speaking. Understanding word stress and sentence stress will help you get across the meaning of what you are saying. And finally, listening, imitating and recording yourself regularly will not only help native speakers understand you more easily, but will help you achieve your accent objectives too. So I really hope you got some value from this lesson. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons down below and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Bye for now.